The woman was desperately trying to buckle the back of the bra, but could not buckle it at all. This is her first time to touch bra in 25 years, but her mother had never taught her how to wear a bra. That's when Seta came behind her and solved the problem for Nalon. He also gave her a deep kiss. Nalon realized that she was Seta's wife. Last night was their wedding night. Nalon refused Seta's touch that night, and Saturday at the end of the bed all night, Seta woke up apologetic. He thought he'd had too much to drink last night and that's why their first night didn't go well. They both got dressed and went downstairs for dinner. Seta thoughtfully gave his wife a piece of meat. Nalon, on the other hand, gave his mother the customary glance. Then she put the meat on the side of the plate in silence and ate only tomatoes and cucumbers throughout the meal. After breakfast, her friend kept asking Nalon how the bag went last night. Nalon was hesitant to say anything. Susan thought she was shy, but she didn't expect Nalon to say that nothing happened last night. Susan said she really couldn't understand. Do you think it's reasonable that nothing happened on your wedding night? As soon as Nalon came out, she ran into her mother. Her mother also asked her what happened last night. Nalon could only say that she wasn't ready. Fairite felt uncomfortable watching her daughter wear a bra for the first time. She also helped her daughter to pull the strap behind her back. Then she told her, You gave me this among those chicks. Breakfast is over. Nalon had to see her parents off too. From now on, she will officially live away from her parents in Seda's house. Seda took Nalon's hand and brought her back home with great joy. He couldn't wait to take Nalon into his room. He used all his charm to make Nalon fall in love with him. But as soon as her husband left the room, Nalon immediately rushed into the bathroom. It was the first time in 25 years that she had bathed herself. She followed her mother's example and applied soap to the towel because she thought she was dirty at the moment. She should not have been touched by Sedat. Nalon remembered what her mother had said and scrubbed herself vigorously. She wanted to wash away the sin of being touched. Nalon couldn't shake the knowledge her mother had instilled in her since she was a child. She was helpless and scared at the same time, but Sedat offers to take Nalon to a beach party. But Nalon trembled at the sound of the sea. Because of her mother's conservative childhood, she was not allowed to wear revealing clothes. So much so that Fair Eyed hated all the bathing suits at the swimming pool. She also had a heated argument with the shopkeeper for this reason. Finally, Fair Eyed gave Nalon a pair of men's swim trunks and an adult swimsuit. Nalon had to wear a leotard under the swimsuit. Her mother made her learn to swim just to give her an additional survival skill. Nalon only learned to swim in unoccupied swimming pools. Fair Eyed would wrap her up tightly when she saw someone coming. She also yells at people who come and says, What are you looking at? Now Sadat is having a beach party. Where does Nalon go from here? She was controlled by her conservative mother for 25 years. So much so that she remains a virgin after her marriage. But on her first day of marriage, her husband asked her to wear a bikini and go to a beach party together. Nalon had no choice but to enlist the help of her friend Susan. Nalon chose a conservative swimsuit in a single color. But Susan stole it from her. She chided that the days of foot binding cloth were over. She then picked out a swimsuit for Nalon to try on. Nalon was hoping to change all that. But 25 years of bondage is not easy to break. In the end, Nalon didn't have the courage. She picked out a bunch of bathing suits and took a jacket to pay for them at the same time. Said it took Nalon to a beach party that day. It was Nalon's first time seeing the sea. It was also the first time she walked into such a crowd. When Said it offered to take off her coat and go swimming together, Nalon hesitated to move. Nalon had delight that she couldn't swim in the face of Said it's friends. Warm invitation. While everyone was singing and dancing, Nalon could only sit alone and watch. She wanted to be part of the fun, but was a little scared. She wanted to be part of the group by serving Jews, so that she wouldn't be seen as an alien. But then she saw Kenna's figure again. She saw Kenna hugging the other people and lost her mood. Kenna pretended to say hello to Nalon. Kenna is actually trying to get people around her to leave Nalon out. She cynically told Nalon that if you can't feed in, don't force yourself to feed in. Nalon was in a bad mood and had to leave on the excuse of going to the bathroom. After the party, Nalon carried a drunk set it back home. And this night, because of Seda's drunkenness, the two of them were still living in the same bed. The next day was the day they both went back to their mother's house. At the dinner table, the mother kept asking Seda something, either consciously or unconsciously. When she learned it that her daughter hadn't slept with her husband for three days after the wedding, Fairite immediately found a reason to call her daughter to the kitchen. She asked Nalon why she was still a virgin. She wanted Nalon to settle the matter immediately. Nalon must not disgrace her family. Otherwise, Nalon's in-laws will think Nalon is a defective woman. When Sedat is playing chess with Nalon's father, Fairite kept a close eye on Nalon. She thought that if Nalon was okay, 
Could it be that her son-in-law has another woman on the side? When Ferrite saw Sedit leaving in the middle of the game, she followed him. She asked Sedit why he hadn't slept with her daughter until now. Is there something wrong with his body itself? Sedit confronted his mother's questioning and felt that it should be left to nature. Naan saw that the two of them were late in coming back, so she came to the kitchen to look for them. But as soon as she reached the door, she overheard the two of them talking. Ferrite ordered Sedit to perform his husbandly duties tonight. He had to do it even if he had to force Nalan to do it. If she hadn't heard these words with her own ears, Nalan couldn't believe it was coming from her mother's mouth. Ferrite kept repeating the word force over and over again. Nalan stood up and interrupted his mother. Instead of feeling guilty, Ferrite began to warn Nalan. If Nalan and her husband could not complete the task today, then she would do it herself. It was then that Nalan realized that her mother was the one who pushed her into the abyss. Her daughter has not had sex with her husband in three days of marriage. Ferrite had rented a house across the street from her daughter and was watching her 24 hours a day with a pair of binoculars. Nalan was on the toilet when she suddenly received a call from her mother. Ferrite asked her to open the curtains of her room immediately and not to turn off the lights but to keep them on. Nalan was puzzled by her mother's strange request. At that moment said it felt that the time was right. The two of them could spend a nice evening together. But Nalan wasn't in the mood for that. She followed to the window and pulled the curtains open. Just when she thought she was overthinking things. The next thing she knew, Fair-Eyed was watching her from across the room with a pair of binoculars. Nalan could never have imagined that her mother had gone so far as to be so desperate. She watched her mother stare at her with her eyes. Nalan couldn't stop trembling for a moment. She knew exactly what her mother was trying to do. If she didn't have sex with her husband today, it was hard for her to imagine what her mother would do tomorrow. Nalan reluctantly told Sedit that tonight was also the night she was looking forward to. She was all ready for it. Sedat, of course, was overjoyed at these words. He got out of bed to soothe Nalan's nerves, and Nalan deliberately led him to the window so that her mother could see the two of them in action. Fair-eyed watched as her daughter followed her plan every step of the way. Fair-eyed began to pray for her inwardly. She wanted Nalan to forget his manners and shame. Then she blew another breath of fairy air on her daughter. Nalan prayed that everything would go well tonight. But things were far from going the way she had hoped. Nalan was halfway through her intimate act with her husband. Her mother's words kept coming back to her mind. Nalan's entire body felt like it had been crawled by 10,000 ants. She was trembling and couldn't stop talking nonsense. This caused Seda to panic. Anyone who saw this would have been shocked. Nalan finally couldn't break free from her chains. She jumped out of bed and started to button up her clothes and clean herself up in a panic. Sedek couldn't understand why Nalan was always like this. She was the one who said she could do it. But when the moment came, Nalan would reject him. He asked Nalan if he knew how much this would affect his body. Now he was like a balloon that was ready to explode. Nalan really didn't know how to face him. She cried and ran into the bathroom. Her behavior certainly annoyed Sedek. On the other side, the mother who saw Nalan's unsuccessful attempt at intimacy, was furious. She blamed her daughter for her incompetence and stupidity and wasted her good intentions. Fair I never reflected on the fact that all this evil came from her. In the bathroom, Nalan scrubbed her hands frantically. At this moment, her faith and courage collapsed. 